You're listening to Better at English. Hi, English learners. Lori here, your teacher from betteratenglish.com. I'm so happy you've decided to join me. Welcome. Come on in. Make yourself comfortable and get ready for some English listening practice. In the previous episode, you heard me and my American friend Will having a conversation about automation and artificial intelligence. Today, you'll be hearing the second and final part of this conversation. As always, the full transcript of every delicious word, every scrumptious syllable, including all the mistakes, all the backtracking, all the rambles, recasts, and interruptions of a real life, spontaneous English conversation. It's all been lovingly prepared and packaged by yours truly, just for you to download to support your English learning. You can find it all at www.betteratenglish.com slash transcripts. And my dear listener, I'm talking to you, yes you, wherever you are, whenever you're listening to this. If you enjoy or benefit from my podcasts or transcripts, I would love it if you could Take a moment to leave a rating or review in your podcast app or iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to this podcast. And, oh, I hope I say this right. Rahula, if you're listening, thank you so much for your review. I saw it this morning and it totally made my day. So thank you so much for taking the time. All right, let's get on with the conversation. Will and I are picking up where we left off by talking about some of the ways we've noticed automation being implemented in real life. Are you ready? Here we go. I heard that, um, I think it's Pizza Hut already has, or no, Domino's is already experimenting with robot pizza delivery vehicles. Yeah. I mean, this, this is happening now. Well, you know, a me, I've been talking about this whole automation thing. Um, oh, by the way, jot this down. If you've never seen mm-hmm. it, there's a there's a short 15 minute video on YouTube called Humans Need Not Apply. And it puts the entire conversation and frames it into a perfect, digestible, understandable video that explains automation for anybody who's interested and doesn't have you know, hours of time to spend on the topic. Oh, yeah, so, great. Thanks. So jot, jot that down. Yep, no problem. Done. Um, <laughs> but um, Amazon, which everybody knows who Amazon is, the company, yeah. they, did, they did something about uh, maybe six months ago or so. They implemented a grocery store that had no cashiers. It was set up with turnstiles that – using your mobile device, you would log in before you entered the store, you would get whatever you needed at the market, groceries, whatever you needed, and you would leave. You wouldn't stand in a line. You would just walk through the turnstile and it would be automatically charged to your account. And I remember when Amazon did this, I kind of freaked out a little bit because I I, I said, you know, it sounded like the crazy preacher man running down the hill. I I said to anybody I'd ever spoken to the topic about, they're testing a patent for this type of framework to be rolled out on a larger scale to the supermarket industry. And in the past week, Amazon has purchased Whole Foods, and I am positive that it is connected to their concept of implementing this you know, cashierless, um, you know, turnstile, just walk in and walk out, fully automated market shopping experience. Wow. I d- oh, oh, my f- goodness. I didn't know that they had bought Whole Foods. Yep. In the past week, I lost my mind when I read it. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, it something like that. I mean, a lot of people would lose their jobs, you know, oh, the, of- the poor yes. cashiers. Um, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it sounds like a nice shopping experience that you just walk in, get your things and walk out and everything is taken care of. I'm mean, provided that it's all accurately, that you're accurately charged for your items. Yes. 
Of course. That's- and it's a perfect it's a perfect example of if it works for the consumer, which it sounds like that's a no-brainer. Mm. And there if the quarterly numbers come out for Whole Foods and they see massive profits as a result of not having to carry those salaries and that that level of overhead as a result of employing humans, mm-hmm. then it'll also make sense from a business perspective. And we will inevitably start to see the shift into the direction of mm-hmm. automation when it mm-hmm. works for people and it works for businesses. And the governments are scrambling around trying to figure out what to do with all of these you know, unem- unemployable people. Yeah. It almost sounds like a dirty word, unemployable. You're unemployable. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it really depends on how, you know, what is going to happen with society as this, you know, as these changes start taking place. Because yes. the point that, that um, remind me of what his name was. Do you remember the name of the the guy who made this this video about the rise of AI? Oh. I, can't, I can't remember his name. Well, in any case, um, the point he made was that if these things do happen, we could, if things go well and if we plan properly, we could mm-hmm. end up with a society where all we humans are doing is um, developing ourselves, learning new things. Exactly. Uh, you know, just basically living a life of that where we can follow our interests and our passions and and then yeah. the machines, the AI is taking care of all the drudgery and all the things that that we used to have to do just to put food on the table. And yeah. according in, I mean in his vision it's possible but the problem is is this feeling that you, we own, our value comes from us trading our effort and yes. our skills and our work for something, some other kind of value, you know, money that we can then use to buy the things we need. Mm. And how many studies have major corporations done around providing leisures? And uh, Google is a great example. They have nap mm. pots and massage parlors and mm. cafes and all of these things that are offered to their employees on premise because they understand that happy, you know, nurtured people are far more productive in that. Oh yeah. And and so apply that, apply that on a societal level where all of the sudden we're happier, we're feeling more fulfilled and we're not being so physically drained and having to micromanage our time to the extent of monotony just because of the life that we've been just uh just born into in 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 the working world Mm. you know it's just it's a it's a frame shift of it's a it's just such a massive change culturally yeah you know we haven't even seen the the conversations that need to happen in any of our governments or congress or you know, anything like that. Right. And I think part of the, the problem is that we're this way of thinking is so ingrained that it's hard to even imagine, imagine yourself into a world where humans don't work in the yeah. traditional sense of work, but, and that it's perfectly okay and that it's desirable for society and that it works well. And, you know, chaos and mayhem don't ensue because because people aren't working jobs and the machines are doing all the things that that we used to have to do um for as forms of labor and it's just so hard to even imagine that that you can't even have a conversation about something that that you can't even imagine yeah, I, I think our I think music and movies and all of these concepts that we have seen artistically uh, have a lot to do with our perception of the issue. And as we have discussed in this conversation, there is so much more to it than mm. just the doom and gloom and and fear aspects of it and we have to have the conversations as a society of what we're going to do to 
move in a direction where a society has these types of, of automated systems in place and we can still be a people that live happily and peacefully and purposefully without having to worry about either apocalypse or an economical crash on the other side of that. Right, coin. right. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting that that this is happening now. There's there's a lot, a lot of things that are potentially scary that are happening right now, um, at least for me personally. And one of them is just the rise of social media and the way ideas can spread like wildfire now. Mm. Mm -hmm. globally within minutes, basically, um, whether they're true ideas or false ideas and that people then act based on what they believe and, and what they think is true. And in yeah. some ways it can be good if it's, if it's for the good, but I see it's also creating a lot of problems. So that's the one thing. And yep. then we have also the climate going on, which I know uh, there's there's some debate about it, but I'm leaning towards the side that that yeah, something is definitely going on with our climate, and it's something we need <laughs> to take seriously and at least yeah, try to work on. You know, uh, I, I yeah, I have always been of the opinion that it doesn't at this point matter what has got us here, or you know who's to blame or yeah what we have to do it's the, it's the same thing as as it's completely parallel to automation you just cannot you cannot deny or discard the notion that it is here and it is happening you have to at minimum have a conversation that acknowledges that it is here and have healthy constructive discussions that yeah. revolve around what what we do about it because nothing else matters other than what we decide to do about it it's exactly. the same with climate it's the same with you know any law any the, the laundry list of global conflicts it's the same all yeah. around yep and and it's it's just growing and the and the way ideas and opinions can so readily be exchanged and how everyone now can have a platform no matter how much they actually know about something and that mm. they can influence other people. Um, so that that's a, a bit scary to me that the information, the ability con to consume information and to form opinions is mm -hmm. greater than it's ever been before. But alongside that, we're not being taught the critical thinking skills and that we need to actually make sense of these things. Yes you know, in a constructive way. And it's that, that is probably one of the scariest things to me about our, you know, the current time that we're in right now is there's all the information is there, but people really aren't equipped to look at it critically at all. Basically, well, that, very few that, people are. That hits the nail on the head is the ability to critically you know, critical thinking and to make distinctions between facts and information and, you know, see what is what is important and what is maybe not important. And, you know, just just kind of a, a D all of the above as far as the, the critical thinking aspect. Yeah. Goes. Yeah. And and it goes for for the study as well, because um to actually like understand what they're talking about, you need to not only, you know, read the actual study itself, but you can't just limit yourself to one study. You need to have a wide knowledge of the whole field and be very well read in order to make sense and, you know, weigh the results of one study against the other and look at the methodology. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's this whole huge conversation that you need to have in order yeah. to have some kind of informed opinion. And the problem is, is that there's just, we can't do that with everything. Yeah. You know, even if we want to, and, you know, are trying, trying our best to be good critical thinkers. And it's just so hard to, to just keep up with, with what's going on. And it's, yeah, it's, 
I love, I love having the access to information and to interesting conversations and all the things you can learn these days. But at the same time, I, I'm, I'm worried about what I see happening when I, when I do go online and, you know, do things like read YouTube comments or even threads yeah. on Facebook. It's, it just, it's hard not to get pessimistic. It is, you know, that's, that's really, I think that the challenge as is with everything is to understand and know all that goes on in the world and yet still find a way to be optimistic and, and hopeful and, you know, be moving forward and, um, you know, not, not be impacted by the negative aspects of this accessibility mm. uh, that we see mm. in, today's, in today's world. Yeah, definitely. Great. Wow. What a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I have yes, to say, has... you have a beautiful voice and you're very well spoken. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean it sincerely. Hi again. That brings us to the end of this Real English Conversations episode. I hope you found this topic interesting to think about, and I hope it gave you some useful vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation in context that you can use in your English learning. I have to say, I really enjoyed working on this episode for you. I noticed that my thinking about the topic has evolved since 2017 when Will and I had this conversation. These days, I'm not so worried about scientists developing a sentient AI or self-aware robots who will decide to exterminate humanity. I'm mainly worried about what we humans and our human nature is going to do with this technology. Will we use AI exclusively for benevolent purposes to make our lives better? Or will we use it as a weapon that will cause more harm than good? And the question of what to do when most of our jobs can be done much more cheaply and efficiently by automated systems, that really can't be ignored. I'm trying to stay optimistic about it all, and I hope I'll be around for the next 30 years or so to see how things play out. Nobody really knows for sure what's going to happen. Even the experts in the field of AI don't really know what the future is going to bring. But no matter what happens, it's definitely going to be interesting. Before I go, I should let you know that I put some extra energy into the transcript for this episode. There's a gap fill listening exercise and also word lists of all the more challenging vocabulary. The word lists are taken from the Oxford 5000 lists for the B2 and C1 levels, so you can check your understanding and look up any words that you're curious about. In the transcript, there's a direct link to the Oxford site where you can look up the words, see definitions, and even hear how they're pronounced in standard British and American English. You can download the whole thing, the whole shebang, the whole kit and caboodle, the whole nine yards at www.betteratenglish.com slash transcripts. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would leave a rating or review wherever you might be listening. And you can contact me directly with your questions and comments on my website. I love hearing from English learners from all over the world, so don't be shy. Until next time, this is Lori signing off from the Better at English Mothership and wishing you an inspired and productive day. Bye for now. Thank you.